Howdy, howdy, Sue Devil here, and uh, welcome to a multiplayer match that I had with uh, Deacon Total War. It, we've been trying to get together for a long time to play a co-op campaign, but it's been really difficult with our schedules, but I managed to get home from work at noon, and uh, he was available, and we played four matches with the Dwarfs versus the Lizardmen. Just took turns uh, swapping sides. And this is basically the build that I recommended in my Essential Unit series. Uh, build is pretty straightforward. We have the Warriors of Dragonfire Pass, four units of Longbeards across the front line. Each edge has uh, Bugman's Rangers and the Slayers with two Chevrons, the Rangers with one Chevron to protect my edges. And we have in the back line the, uh, a group of Hammers with one Chevron. And here they're Grumbling Guard for some armor piercing and, of course, their uh, Vigor Aura. We have the Uthar's Raiders in the back to fight against the big things. And, of course, we have our Lord. I've taken the regular Lord instead of the Rune Lord this time and also the Dragonback Slayers. The army we're going to be facing up uh, against is the Lizardman army <clears throat> that Deacon is controlling is... Uh, the Gobble King's army, which I really, really like. I did a lot of testing against this army with a bunch of builds, and it was the most difficult army to fight against, and it has a very good set of options. But we have here some Pterodon Riders, uh, Feral Cold Ones put, pushed out to each flank. We have our center line of Saurus Warriors with, sh with shields and Saurus Warriors. So we have three Saurus Warriors with shields and two Saurus Warriors. We have a Skink Chief on a... Um, on a uh, Ancient Stegadon, we have a Ferrable Stegadon, and Croxagors, and we have Lord Mazdamundi. So without further ado, we'll get this going. And <clears throat> four matches I wanted to play was to test the build that we got going. So first I'm just going to start taking some shots on these Feral Cold Ones. And relatively quickly, I'm taking some shots on this side as well. Uh, I will switch to the Pterodon Riders. And... Uh, push my slayers in here and I'll probably just take that first charge they we send in our our infantry just to engage across the front line against the Saurus Warriors now these Bugman's Rangers we know we can take the charge on that feral cold one so I'm not so worried I'll get my slayers moving here fairly quickly uh, I just want to engage across the front line and uh, get my units going and uh, he's going to land his Pterodon Riders, which is a very good target, these Uthar's Raiders, and I think I'm going to bring my Lord over here to try and dumpster those guys as quickly as I can. Now, these Croxagors are interesting, and this is one of the things that uh, um, Gobble King talks about, is how good the Croxagors can be, and they, I didn't focus on them at all, and they just absolutely dumpster these Longbeards. Skink Chief comes in to help with that. Uh, unfortunately, I've got my hammers over here. I do need to pull them over. Uh, I've gotten rid of these uh, Feral Cold Ones, and I'm going to turn my Slayers around right here and get onto the Feral Basilidon and start supporting with my Bugman's Rangers. Like this, these two, the Bugman's Rangers and the Slayers on the edges, work very, very well. Uh, hopefully I'll realize my Slayers are doing nothing. If I do, I'm probably going to send them after Mazdamundi. And I need to get my Rangers away from these Saurus Warriors. Now, the Saurus Warriors... Range Rangers are very robust. The only the only uh, thing I really want to keep away from Saurus Warriors are these Slayers. Now, the Croc scores have already dumpstered my Longbeards in the front here and have moved on to try and help the left flank fight against my ham my Hammers and uh, the Warriors of Dragonfire Pass here. And I'll bring in my Lord and the Dragonback Slayers into this fight. And this Lord, he's giving the the buff of plus five melee attack and the six percent weapon damage so you can see the hammers uh, let me see if I can click on those hammers well, you can see they have the buff but they have uh, 45 uh, weapon weapon damage and now 52 melee attack so anytime my lords around anybody that really increases their ability now I've got my Uthar's Raiders I think I put Mark by Uthar uh, the skink chief no not yet but I'm gonna try and dumpster that skink chief and these guys are so good you can just look at his health go down i've got my dragon back slayer slowing him down my lord's in there to help he is going to get a charge off of there um but i'm going to be able to manage that fight over here finally got the croxagors 
routing and the Sor the Saurus warriors are having a are struggling in that fight on this side. Mazda Mundi is still running around. He's just used ruination of cities. The front line has held for a very long time. That's one of the things that these Longbeards will do is they'll hold and hold and hold. And even though they're going to lose this engagement, they, they've they still managed to to hold the line. And same with the Warriors of Dragonfire Pass. That's why they're such good units in the front line is they can just hold that engagement. So we've got uh, the Skink Chief going. We can, re we can redeploy all of our big units and get them going. Uh, Mazda Mundi is going to have a hard time taking out the Bugman Rangers and these Slayers. Uh, I should pull back these Bugman Rangers fairly quickly. There we go. So we can start getting shots on Mazda Mundi. And I believe I'm going to bring my Lord and Dragonback Slayers around. But you can see at this point the battle is uh, getting very close to over. We've, we've won on the left side even though we've lost some units and this is the advantage of testing against another player like Deacon has played a lot of different factions um, he knows how to control his armies and uh, particularly the, the magic so it's much better than playing against the AI which I did a lot of testing on and uh, other than that we're this is just now in cleanup and we've got our these Croxagores are almost gone and everyone is starting to route here yep we got 10 seconds left in that battle and we've managed to pull out a victory. So uh, I think I can get the end plates here. And uh, you can see from the end plates, those Croxagores, I never focused on them. They got 44 kills. And this is one of the interesting things that uh, Gobble King talked about in his build. Like this is his build and it's actually really, really good and quite flexible. It's not a, a final build. It's meant to particularly to let people uh, give the people a good package to learn to fight against the dwarfs. But the Croxagors, if you don't focus on them, can just be crushing. And they got 44 kills. They're able to go around the battlefield. The units that are very hard to use are these Pterodon Riders and the Feral Cold Ones. Um, particularly with this setup where we have uh, Slayers and uh, Bugman's Rangers on the edges, they really anchor your edges quite nicely and make it very difficult for uh, anyone to come around. And, um, you know, and it's, it's quite actually it's quite difficult to penetrate when you have good edge defense and there's nothing in the guts for you to attack except for the Azuthar's Raiders. Uh, but Mazda Mundi got 61 kills, Skink Chief got 56, and uh, you can see in general the Saros Warriors 28, 36, 37, 42, 56. They outperformed my uh, Longbeards. We got 16, 37, 30, and 24. In general, the the Warriors of Dragon Fire Pass got 35, but not by a massive amount. It was really the, uh, the Hammers and the Grumbling Guard which were able to uh, make these engagements work, and the Slayers which were able to uh, kind of manage the Feral Cold Ones and wrote kind of their bigger stuff, the Feral Basilodons, and eventually Skink Chief and Mazda Mundi himself. Now, what we did for this is we, like I said, we have four battles testing two different builds, but I wanted to swap sides to give Deacon this army, and then I took the uh, the Gobble King's army just to see what the difference would be. Now, let me see. Yeah, I think, uh, and Deacon's never managed, never controlled this army before, and I've never played anything but the Dowie, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not so good at using the old, using magic and everything else like that, uh, but 401 to 316, so I, I lost 401 in this, so we'll see if uh, Deacon pulls out better, so we'll just load up the second one, Deacon 2, and uh, yeah, you're not going to see that, you're not going to see that name with this, this army with a non dowie army very often. Uh, it's just for fun and just for testing so we could get some good testing going. So uh, what I wanted to do with uh, my army is try to put these three uh, big lizards together and then put my Croxagores on the other side and I put my feral cold ones way out wide but I thought I'd save them to a little later in the battle and push them in and uh, Deacon's gone for a similar setup, uh, keeping his Lord, though, and the Dragonback Slayer separate. And I still can't see the U Uther's Raiders or the Bugman's Rangers, so I don't know quite where they are. But again, he's got the Grumbling Guard and the Hammers in the back line and the Slayers covering 
those edges, which is going to make it very hard to penetrate that back line. Um, here, I'm just going to fast forward it a little bit until my army gets into play. And what you'll see here is, you know, I started to, I wanted to get my pterodon riders in to start taking some shots. And I wanted to use my my big dinos to come in and, and hit the Gremlin Guard and try and knock them out. And you can see here Deacon focuses everything on these Croxagors. Um, I did try to pop plop them in, but I didn't really notice what was going on because I was trying to cycle through my spells and get everything going. But uh, yeah, so he tried to put his Uthar's Raiders in tight, but I just wanted to come in support and try and crack that edge with uh, with these Croxagors. But he's going to start shooting with these Uthar's Raiders and just melt those Croxagors. He's got his Bugman's Rangers on both sides in the Uthar's Raiders, and once those Uthar's Raiders start shooting, there they go. You can see the Croxagors are just going to get absolutely dumpstered. Those Uthar Raiders are awesome. So I wanted to bring my Pterodon Riders into the Uthar's Raiders just to stop them. Uh, but I didn't notice my Croxagors getting getting crushed. And now he's just got his Slayers in the back. He's, they haven't really had to do anything yet. I also wanted to bring in my big units to try and take the Grumbling Guard. I got them in a little bit too deep. I just wanted to try and disrupt the back line a little bit. And... Uh, just find an opening with these frail cold ones but and there's my croxagor is already gone but it's really hard because it was, it was fun trying to face your own builds but it's like with these slayers in the back so like he hasn't even had to engage them yet and there's not really a good place to go and attack and I'm not getting as far on these uh, grumbling guards as I thought I would I thought I'd bring all three of these guys in uh, use my spells and uh, buff up the front line and try and knock those grumbling guard out and now I'm trying to path my big dinos back out through the front and I lost my feral cold ones to these slayers and again I'm trying to path these feral cold ones back around because I want to get to these Uthar's raiders. I got my Croxigar's back and he's just focusing them again they're gonna get in a few shots and get absolutely murdered and I'm still trying to path these guys back in to find a good spot to go and attack. I um, thought I'd bring my Skeek Chief in just to disrupt those Uthar's Raiders, but now I'm lost a little bit of cohesiveness, hitting some hitting some of my spells here. Uh, what have we got going? It's out of control. Saurus Warriors. Yeah, Greater Arcane Conduit and Sunburst. Missile Resistance and, and Melee Defense. Uh, and I've already gotten a little bit buggered up in there, but I didn't focus on these slayers at all. I'm still was trying to find a path in with these feral cold ones because I wanted to just get to the back of these guys, but it was really, really difficult. So we already got our skink chief routing. Uh, Mazda Mundi is fighting. Unfortunately, I've got a bad engagement because I got slayers there. These grumbling guard are going to come in and, um, my feral bastilodons lost everyone's out of control well, that's one of the things about the lizardman army that i never realized man is it annoying when you can't control your units <laughs> so i feel for any for everyone who plays the lizard bend of how frustrating that could be but uh yeah just pass Ma path mazda mundi in here to make sure that i get on to these uthars raiders but he's got dragon back slayers right in there there's just no good place to go i did manage to get my feral cold ones in and my uh, Pterodon Riders into the Bugman's Rangers again, but I've already lost all the infantry engagement, and I'm just trying to path Mazda Mundi around, and I haven't even touched the Lord or done anything really, really useful. I think I played pretty poorly, but um, maybe if I had 100 goes at it, I might be able to play a little bit better. Uh, you can see there's just... It doesn't feel like there's... When I was attacking this, it doesn't feel like there's anywhere good to go. So, uh, definitely, I, I like the way that the Dowie army sets up here. And uh, how it gives... It just, it's just really thorny, you know, when you're trying to attack it. And, it, you know, these Slayers, just having three groups of them makes a pretty big difference because they can just run around the battle so we got 20 seconds left 
we'll just fast forward that. I just run my guys around until I'm done. And yeah, so uh, the, the the so Deacon did better than me. <laughs> I think so I, he had a three three hundred to four hundred something like that. But uh, um, still, you can see the the infantry engagement across the front. Like the Longbeards, 33, 32, 46, 29, and 22 with the Warriors of Dragonfire Pass. We got 18, 16, 49, 49, and 34. Generally pretty even. And my Croxagores, though, uh, only got 11 because he focused them down. Very similar numbers with Mazamundi and a Skink Chief. Uh, I did get a little bit better in numbers with these, these uh, Feral Cold ones, but I held them off to the very end. And, uh, you know... Uh, the Slayers did actually quite nicely in that engagement. So that was the first set of battles we ran. And now we have one more um, setup that I wanted to run. And this is that sour, that Mass Sourus Warriors build. I thought when I played against the AI, the AI just doesn't know how to flank with infantry. Or really struggles with it. So um, I thought I did... Vanguard deploy with my Bugman's Rangers just for fun, but we got the same sort of thing. We've gone very, very wide. We've got uh, these frail cold ones on the far outsides, and I've just gone very, very wide with the Dowie line. So this is me again playing the dwarfs and Deacon Total War playing the Lizardmen, and uh, we'll see here. These uh, Bugman's Rangers have a speed of 33, and these guys have a speed of 31, so they can just kite them all day. Uh, feral cold ones are going to try and flank and he's basically got even support with his skink priest with heavens uh, Krokgar down the center and he's got a skink chief on a pterodon uh, so basically I tried to, to to stop him from getting around because I know I can't manage that engagement of Saurus warriors on slayers so that's a bad bad engagement for the Dowie but I couldn't do it on this side he's got two clear Saurus warriors on this side so I'm just going to run my Slayers and Bugman's Rangers. And it's actually a decent um, engagement because these Slayers are worth 972 and these guys are worth like uh, uh, 782. So I thought I'd get some shots in with my Uthar's Raiders just to, to get them down a little bit. And now he's got his Feral Cold ones coming in for a Shut rear charge. Oh, and he's brought his Feral Cold ones way out wide on this side. So... Again, I've just run my Slayers away and tried to use my Bugman's Rangers to shoot these guys in the back. And now I believe I'll see this and bring my Slayers back to try and rear charge these Sourus Warriors. And I'm just kiting back here because I don't really have any other options. So I'm bringing my Slayers to try and rear charge these Sourus Warriors. And I think uh, Deacon notices this uh, right before I get there and turns around so I don't get a good charge. But... With an edge defense like this, you're kind of damned if you do, and you, yeah, he notices it and, and counter charges, but now he's going to get shot in the back, and I'm just going to pull those Slayers back out again, and I'm going to keep keep on kiting out here, and now that my Slayers have gone out, I think I do bring them back to the front line, but the front line engagement is going pretty pretty good. I've managed to to route one group of Sourus Warriors. He's brought in his Skink Chief to try and support, and same with Krokgar uh, down the center. We've got the Grumbling Guard and Longbeard. And the Grumbling Guard, like these Longbeards, are, are winded. Grumbling Guard, fresh. Uh, they're just going to last forever. And these Longbeards against Saurus Warriors shields and they, uh, Longbeards against Saurus Warriors are just, it's just a very good engagement. I brought my Lord back with the Dragonback Slayers to try and get his Skink Priest off. And we've got our Hammers uh, ready to re-engage if I ever do notice them again. I think I was focusing back down on this side and I just let my slayers take this engagement. I know that's a, not a good engagement for me down on this side, but I thought figured they were low enough that I should be able to finish them off. And we've got our longbeards just holding and holding and holding. We've got two Sourus Warriors tied up here and I got my Bugman's Ranger shooting back into the Skink Chief. And we got our Slayers engaged. Like, this is a very, very good engagement for our Slayers against, uh, oh, not against the Sourus Warriors, against the Skink Chief. Uh, so I managed to get my Hammers back in to support on the far outside with these Longbeards. And I've managed to get my Uthar's Raiders back in to start shooting 
uh, into the Saurus Warriors and Krokgar. And we've got the Grumbling Guard. I don't know why exactly I pulled those guys out. Or maybe I was chasing these guys, but you can see we're still just winded. We're deep, deep into the battle. And finally uh, caught up with the Feral Cold Ones all the way back to this side. Finally caught up with these Bugman's Rangers with the Saurus Warriors, but the Bugman's Rangers are just gonna last and last and last for a very long time. They're just so robust. And uh, despite having a very, very wide line and trying to go around and engage and get those good engagements against my Slayers, it's still, the Dowie infantry is just so robust uh, against the, uh, against the, uh, Lizardman Infantry. We've got the Uthar's Raiders back here. We're going to just start dumpstering Krokgar. And you just see his health just going down in one shot. I'll send my Lord, the Dragonback Slayers, after him. And again, our Bugman's Rangers are still out here fighting. They're not going to win, but they're going to hold for a very long time. Wrapped up my right flank and just pulling back in. And I wouldn't, you know, this engagement has stayed, lasted forever, but we got our Slayers here against Sour's Warriors. We're going to lose that, but now all it is is just consolidating the infantry fight over here and uh, just staying and managing on this side. So I'll bring back all my units over, over on this side just to support this engagement. And there's not a whole lot left to do. Like, Dowie infantry with any amount are just going to be quite good. Finally got a shot off against my Lord with the Krokgar. But we got over here some uh, the Dragonback Slayers, and they're just going to eat, eat up Krokgar. So it's a pretty messy fight. Um, yeah, finally these guys have been routed. Like It's taken a very, very long time, but they're basically out of the fight completely. And, uh, you know, the Dowie don't move really quick, but I'm able to consolidate my infantry. Still got a unit of Bugman's Rangers online. My Uthar's Raiders are ready to fight, and we've got this fight against Krokgar. One, like, he can't really go anywhere. He's at 8 speed. He's, oh, now he's at, but he was at 8 speed. Or, sorry. Speed is 50. Uh, it's going to be hard for him to run away. So, even in that fight with that really wide Saurus line, the, uh, this is where the, the Dowie infantry really, really shines. Uh, again, we're not getting a, a massive amount of kills but those long beards just hold and hold and hold and the, you, you know the hammers really start to shine like I had lots of hammers left they had 85 kills the grumbling guard had 93 uh, Uthar's Raiders had 42 and uh, Bugman's Rangers 49 and these are the Bugman's Rangers that fought the Saurus Warriors now they lose that fight but you know when you have 10 Saurus Warriors and you only have uh, seven infantry units of your own you're gonna have to take some sub optimal engagements so we fought this one more time we swap sides again so uh and um uh, deacon wanted to just set up like i set up my line wide because i knew i was fighting this he wanted to set up normally and just to see how the uh dwarfs would do against that so we have here the fourth battle we played again not going to see that Sioux Devil name in front of uh, <laughs> non Dowie armies very often. But, uh, you know, for science, we needed to do the testing. And uh, I've got my line very, very wide. And again, I put my, my uh, command units together because I wanted to try and use them in a coordinated way. Uh, and I've got my Feral Cold ones way out wide. So I thought, well, maybe I'll be able to get some better engagements with them if I just hold them off. And Deacon has got his uh, units set up in more of a, a traditional way. Uh, Bugman's Rangers in front of the Slayers. And the Slayers are just right across the back. He's got his Uthar's Raiders ready to go to either side. And he's already just rearranging his uh, Uthar's Raiders and uh, Bugman's Rangers probably to match up with my leadership over here. So let me just fast forward it a bit. So I tried to get some early shots with my Skink Chief, but the Bugman's Rangers 
just started taking shots back and I wanted to take two units of Saurus Warriors and run them out wide on both sides so I've engaged try to one for one across the line of all the uh, dwarf units and I'm bringing my Saurus Warriors out wide to try and get in I want an engagement against the Slayers and I've got my my feral cold ones way out wide now I put Krokgar in here I wanted to disrupt these Uthar's Raiders because I know how dangerous they are but in this fight like even though I'm, I'm getting some damage to his lord because I've got my my uh, skink chief up in the air and I've got my skink priest and I'm just I'm casting some of my spells over here um, I w just uh, disrupting those raiders but here come those hammers and I didn't notice these guys coming in and they're just going to absolutely demolish me with this lord because they are also getting that plus five melee attack and plus six percent weapon damage the dragonback slayers are on the way in and I was meanwhile busy uh, controlling my Saurus warriors and he's just looking off of these frail cold ones with these slayers which allowed me to get my Saurus warriors into the side uh, doing the same thing with these slayers um, allowing me to get my Saurus warriors on the inside which is good which is good I mean I'm okay with that these feral cold ones are worth 450 the slayers are worth 972 so now we're gonna get our Saurus warriors in uh, unfortunately I've lost Krokgar because I wasn't paying attention but I've got my Saurus Warriors into the back line. I'm going to get engaged with those Bugman's Rangers. And I'm going to come on to this side and get into the Uthar's Raiders. And I still have my Feral Cold Ones available for a charge. I've got my Skink Chief still focusing down his Lord. And I've got my uh, Skink Priest uh, just waiting for some of my spells to come up. I've got uh, uh, Uranus Thunderbolt, Curse of the Midnight Wind and uh, harmonic convergence so I don't know what we got going here yes. and now I'm just getting focused down by those bugman's rangers but I, I see an opening here with these feral cold ones so I'm going to rear charge the grumbling guard and he's got his slayers kind of coming to rear charge my so these Saurus warriors but now I've kind of been able to collapse in and I can bring in my Feral Cold Ones. I know that I don't want to take a rear charge with these Saurus Warriors, but they'll hold up reasonably well against the Slayers. It's just whether or not they'll they'll be able to last uh, because they start going crazy and they're, they're, you can't control them. But I got a good rear charge against the Grumbling Guard here, and I'm going to path these guys back to try and get another rear charge. And I finally got my Feral Cold Ones coming in the sides. I'm trying to to get into these Uthar's Raiders because I know from testing that this uh, engagement is very good for the uh, Feral Cold Ones and I lost control of these guys. This is so annoying. Um, but even with the, even though the Saurus Warriors w win that engagement pretty handily, with that Lord there giving everyone plus five melee attack and plus six percent weapon damage, the rear charging, the rear charge of the Slayers was just absolutely devastating. And uh, like I wasn't able to control these feral cold ones. Losing Krokgar early was a pretty big mistake. And uh, you know we still got fights going here. Warriors of Dragonfire pass against Sour Swords of Shield. It's just they're all by themselves, just fighting away, and they'll keep fighting. Um, but basically now, I tried to collapse in on this uh, engagement, but that that buff is quite nice with that with uh, the Dowie Lord. Plus five melee attack, plus six percent weapon damage, and from here on out, it's uh, there's not much that's going to happen. You know, it's just it's just uh, basically deacons on cleanup. He's going to clean up the rest of my uh, sourses. And anyone who plays Dowie, I mean, when you look at you look at those numbers, I mean, you don't you need far less to win. Like the the Dowie leadership is one of their great strengths, and. Uh, that is the end of that fight. All right, so end that replay. And uh, again, same, kind of the same story. Although I'll say these Longbeards did a little bit, uh, little, little bit better. And boy, these Slayers with the rear charges, with the rear charges and that plus five percent, plus five melee attack and plus six percent weapon damage, they did quite good. Uh, 63, 50, and 60, so that was quite powerful. No kills for the Bugman's Rangers 
for the Uthars Raiders, but he focused on my Lords and uh, did quite well to bring them down. You know, same sort of stuff for the Saros Warriors, 20, 34, 41, 45, 28, 40. This guy's got 70. Krokgar, I misused him quite badly. Um, did get a few charges in with the Saros, or with the Feral Cold Ones, but, uh, you know, that was about it. So, um, what I'll do is, um, oh, I was doing some testing. I'm, I'm doing some testing for the uh, uh, against the Dark Elves um, to do a new Essential unit series, but uh, hopefully you found that battle interesting. I just will end the battle with some of the live commentary. It was, uh, it, like I said, Deacon and I have been trying to get together since December for a co-op campaign. If you haven't gone to his channel, go and check it out. It's Deacon Total War, D-E-A-C-O-N-T-W. He does tons of uh, let's plays with lots of different factions and uh, has a lot of content on his channel and uh, I think he'll be putting up a version of this he might actually put up the whole live version we recorded this live with some commentary over um, but uh, I'll put a bit of the end commentary he was his kids were all going to bed and I was home for home from work for lunch so we we're both we we're both kind of a rush so uh, thanks Deacon for joining me for our first get-together and uh, you'll hear at the end we're we're already talking about a, another matchup with the Dowie against uh, Bretonia, which will be really fun. But uh, I will just uh, switch over to a little bit of the end commentary, uh, end commentary from the live uh, recording now. Here, so uh, any comments or anything on what you how you felt the build was to play or uh, anything you noticed about it or. Well, um, it's hard to counter. Yeah, that's, you know, hopefully that's kind of what I was going for. Like something that was fairly, you could bring but a I'm, wide range of Lizardmen armies and it's difficult to, you always have answers. So, yeah. So, I, would, I would like to bring a Bretonian build to counter this. Well, you, well, then I would have to make an anti-Bretonian dwarf army. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, we can try. I mean, yeah. that'll be fun. If you, if you, do you, do you, yeah, like if we, if we had a chance, I could put together some Bretonian builds if you want to take a, if you want to put together some Bretonian builds and we'll do it again. We'll play a, like a, a match structure and, and uh, cast it out and put it on there. So I'm, yeah, thanks so much, Deacon. I really appreciate it. And uh, let's, Maybe we can do some nooners once in a while, and I'll let you know. Yeah, I, I thought it was it was going to be two hours later than you said it was fine, and this was actually around seven. So yeah. um, so you're it, only you're only seven hours behind me. That's interesting. It's not too bad. Yeah, that's not too bad at all. So we'll uh, yeah, let's plan to get together again. And man, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and also I'm open to try out a campaign. It's just in a noon break uh, we can do some uh, multiplayer matchups. Yeah, but campaign, campaign is going to be. Uh, it's harder to do over a noon harder. hour, but yeah, like if we get some multiplayer, if you want to do a Bretonia lizard or Bretonia dwarf, that'd be great. I'd like to try at least. It's just that I'm interested to see if there's a counter to the dwarves, which yeah. I think uh, they are capable of downing every um, opposing faction. I mean that. The, they, they they don't have too many weaknesses. Yeah, they have but, a lot of tools. And their cab yeah, exactly. is so good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, <laughs> I use I use the gyrocopters as cavalry to be honest with the doors. Yeah. And they do they do fairly well if you just consider them cavalry. Cool. All right, yeah. I'll let you go and, and uh kiss your kids goodnight and you know yeah. thanks again, Deacon. Okay. I really yeah, appreciate you, it. Thank you as well and uh, I had a lot of fun. I hope to see you again soon. Yeah, all right, you have a good one, eh? Okay, see you later. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye-bye.